Hi everyone, welcome to my video- of course it's a video. Hi everyone, welcome to my review of the film Chasing Coral. Now first, a word of advice. If you see this film at a public screening, don't wear a full face of makeup. You're going to cry, and then when you have a chance to do a Q&A with one of the people who worked on the film, you're gonna be really embarrassed that maybe there's makeup on my face. I don't know. And you just don't want to be in that position, or at least, at least if you're- <laughs> That's what happened to me, anyway. Chasing Coral follows a group of scientists and engineers and filmmakers over the course of a couple years trying to document coral bleaching in the wild. Just a quick primer on coral bleaching. Basically, coral can only survive in a very small range of temperatures and if it gets one or two degrees higher than what they're used to, they will get rid of all of the algae that lives inside them and are unable to eat and eventually die. The film does a much better job of explaining it. And of course, with climate change and the ocean being a large, you know, body of water that absorbs heat. Corals are really at risk for this right now and in the future. And here's the thing, trying to document this actually happening while it's happening is really hard. The guest speaker at the showing I was at was one of the engineers who tried to design a camera that could stay underwater for long periods of time and it's just, it was so complicated. I just, whoa. This film is beautiful, but of, of course it's beautiful. It's you can't go wrong with coral reefs. They're they're beautiful. They're just like objectively. If there is such a thing as objective beauty, coral reefs have it. Also, all of the characters in the documentary are really just inherently likable. There's this guy who is a self-described coral nerd. He was just so excited to be able to work on corals, and the whole time I was just like, I'm so proud of you. I just met you. And I'm proud of you. God, the some of the pictures they show you are just the, it's devastating. It's really remarkable what they did. Just the way that they put the film together, you end up empathizing with these creatures that don't even have a face. It's it's really intense and it's really really well done. As far as implications of losing coral, they mentioned that we could lose an entire ecosystem but they never really expand upon it beyond that. Like, they never really talk about how it would affect people. They mention offhand that coral reefs are important nurseries for fish species, like in including fish species that we catch and eat, but they don't really talk about how fishing communities will lose a really vital food source if these coral reefs no longer exist. And I get it, it's not really trying to be a human-centric movie. But a lot of these fishing communities are in the global south, which are going to be disproportionately affected by climate change. So just not including it, not, in not even mentioning it, just feels a little eh. They also have the classic, here's what you can do to help, here's a little bit of hope, that they have at the end of these kind of movies. Um, but, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't think it really works. And I don't really fault the film for this, I'm, they probably did a good enough job, I'm just, I was already really sad, and now they're like, but there's hope, and I'm still crying about the coral, it's dying, and I'm just, ugh, I'm just really jaded. Despite my, like, minor problems with it, it's still a really good film, and I really suggest you watch it. I gave it five stars on Letterboxd, which, okay, granted, I'm really liberal with how I rate films on Letterboxd, but, but it deserves it, it deserves the five stars. It's on Netflix, so just check it out if you get a chance. And I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is the first vlog-ish video I've made in a while. If you're wondering if I'm going to continue doing this, probably not. YouTube is a dying platform.